Welcome back to Outer Space. In this video, we're going to continue on with our tour of the eukaryotic cell, focusing on the endoplasmic reticulum, transport vesicles, and the Golgi apparatus. Without further ado, let's start with the endoplasmic reticulum, or so this sketch doesn't end up longer than Gone with the Wind, the ER. The membrane of the ER is continuous with the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope. Thus, the ER is another membrane-bound organelle and will be represented by these double-paned glass compartments and tubes, known in space as R and S manufacturing. Why R and S? Well, the ER comes in two flavors, rough and smooth. And why manufacturing? That's because the primary function of the endoplasmic reticulum is to manufacture and more specifically, to produce, process, and transport cellular materials. We'll go over all these details in a bit, but first, let's talk structure. Since the endoplasmic reticulum is an extension of the nuclear envelope, which is a part of the endomembrane system, it makes sense that the ER is as well, hence the EMS Enterprise logos. Now, while the nuclear envelope is composed of two membranes, it's just the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope that goes on to form the ER, so the ER is surrounded by a single membrane, not double. As I just mentioned, the ER is actually composed of two distinct types, depicted by the R-labeled compartments and S-manufacturing tubes. Let's start with the R compartments. R is rough, but why is this thing called rough anyway? Well, the RER is rife with ribosomes, like real rough with them. See, there's a riboprinter on the glass here too. And that unshaven guy couldn't possibly be that soft. I'd even call him rough. But yeah, the presence of bound ribosomes plays into the primary function of the RER, production of modified proteins. Look at that freshly printed chicken leg. That thing is packed full of protein. While the ribosomes are responsible for producing the initial structure of proteins, the RER is needed to augment these polypeptide chains via folding and modification. Now, these proteins don't just idly sit around the RER. Most end up in membranes, are exported to other organelles, or are transported outside the cell via the secretory pathway. Hence, these three very explicit tags. Let's move on to the RER's much smoother counterpart, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or SER. Remember how the rough ER is littered with ribosomes? Well, the smooth ER has none. Nada. Zilch. That's because the SER is responsible for synthesizing lipids. And you know how many ribosomes you need to do that? None. Oh, yikes. Someone get a plumber up here? But this fatty mess does do a great job of representing the production of lipids in the smooth ER. Is it weird that I'm getting hungry looking at this pizza butter cheese fry situation? But that's not all. The SER is also involved in the detoxification of harmful substances, such as drugs, alcohol, and metabolic waste products. This role is especially important in the liver, the main organ for, you know, detoxification. The biohazard filter and the bottle of tequila, I mean, poison, is to remind you that the SER gets rid of toxins. All right, now that we've detailed all the ERs, let's talk about the transport of products they make to other regions of the cell. The membranous little vesicles responsible for transporting stuff are called transport vesicles. Almost too on the nose, that one. These are represented by the double-paned glass V bubbles floating around the space station. Transport vesicles are produced when portions of membrane bud from parts of the endomembrane system. Given that vesicles come from parts of the endomembrane system, you might be thinking that transport vesicles are also a part of the EMS. And they are. Did the EMS Enterprise logo give it away? So, what do these lippity little blebs transport? Well, one thing they do is they shuttle proteins, or chicken legs and hams, from the rough ER to other parts of the endomembrane system, such as the Golgi apparatus. See this orb merging with the spaceship's wall and releasing a ham out into the great wide beyond? or intercellular space, that's A, a waste of perfectly good snacks, and B, 
because vesicles can also release cellular products through exocytosis. In exocytosis, vesicles merge with a cell's outer membrane and empty the contents of the vesicles into the intercellular space, where hopefully they are put to better use than that ham. Speaking of, let's follow these transport vesicles to the next part of the endomembrane system, the Golgi apparatus, or Golgi body, or Golgi complex, or goldfish receptionist in front of the ship's processing center. The Golgi is another organelle that's bound by a single membrane, hence the glass. And yep, another EMS Enterprise logo. The Golgi is another member of the endomembrane system. The Golgi receives, modifies, sorts, and ships certain molecules. Kinda sounds like a processing center, no? Hmm, a meat processing center. The Golgi apparatus consists of a group of flattened membranous sacs called cisterni. It's been compared to flattened stacks of pita, but I assure you, it's way less delicious than that. The Golgi has two distinct sides or faces. The cis face is where vesicles from the ER fuse to the Golgi, so it's the receiving end of the Golgi. Sort of like how these goldfish receptionist sisters are receiving a chicken-filled vesicle at the cis side of the production center. The trans face is the shipping end where vesicles form and bud off the Golgi, carrying products to other locations within the cell or to the plasma membrane to get excreted, hence the trans port side of the Golgi processing center. So what kind of magic happens between the cis and trans faces? For starters, it's involved in the modification of molecules, like altering proteins or membrane phospholipids. Typically, modification involves the addition of extra chemicals, like sulfates, phosphates, or carbs. Ah, uh, another ham. But this time, in the Golgi Processing Center, it's being wrapped, modified, if you will, for future transport to my kitchen table, or, you know, other organelles. The Golgi is also responsible for sorting cellular materials and packaging them properly to ensure they make it to the correct destination. How does this happen? Well, the Golgi can add signaling sequences to molecules to make sure they're directed to the right location. Hence, the sorting of this space meat and packaging of it into transport orbs. There are also special coded protein complexes responsible for directing vesicular traffic inside the cell. They're called COP1, COP2, and clathrin, and basically tell the vesicle where to go next once it's been packed up and shipped. You can think of these proteins as cellular traffic cops, which is why we've represented COP1 with this space cop. COP1 coded vesicles move in the retrograde direction. This means going from the cis Golgi to the rough ER. In contrast, COP2 coded vesicles move enterograde, that is, from the RER to the cis Golgi. To represent COP2, you can see this two headed traffic cop heading in the opposite direction of his single brained pal. And finally, any vesicles coated in clathrin move from the trans-Golgi to lysosomes. Which is why this orb, coated in a clathrin-shaped alien, is leaving the transport side of the processing center. Clathrin also helps bring new stuff inside the cell via receptor-mediated endocytosis, but we'll save those details for another time. Okay, well, this has been a lot of making, modifying, and transporting cellular products. Let's pause and review. We started in the endoplasmic reticulum, which actually has two components. The rough ER is full of ribosomes and is responsible for synthesizing and modifying proteins. While the smooth ER handles lipid synthesis and detoxifying harmful substances. Transport vesicles move cellular products between organelles, like from the ER to the Golgi apparatus. COP1, COP2, and clathrin are protein complexes that coat vesicles to direct them to the correct location. But vesicles can also transport molecules out of a cell through exocytosis. Finally, we looked at the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus receives molecules from other parts of the cell, then sorts and modifies them by adding additional chemical groups, or adding signaling sequences to determine where the final product should be transported. Well, that's all for now. Stay posted to complete this grand tour of the cell ship.